This is Laura Mayerson, who is currently a Fulbright Scholar in the Czech Republic. We're meeting her at her working place at the Institute of Botany, Academy of Sciences of the Czech Republic in Průhonice. Our first question is, why did you choose to pursue your research in the Czech Republic? Because I study a particular plant, and the plant is called Phragmites australis. And here in the Czech Republic, um, it's the uh, central part of its native range. So I can look at this plant in its native habitat here in the Czech Republic and study it in its introduced habitat in North America. So that gives me a really unique opportunity to do some interesting research. The second reason I chose the Czech Republic um, is because of um, my, my colleague and collaborator, uh, Professor Peter Pisek. And he is one of the leaders in the world in the field of invasion biology, which is my field. And with him, um, I'm collaborating on a, a very big research project looking at how um, the genetics of particular populations of invasive plants um, perform in different environments. So together uh, we're able to accomplish a lot more uh, than I would be by myself back, back in the United States. This plant is found all over Europe and it grows in wetlands and marshes, it grows along the coast. So one theory is that the plant was brought to North America um, in the solid ballast of ships um, way back 200 years ago. Uh, but we don't really know. We don't have any evidence to prove that. It could have been much earlier. It could have been brought over by the Vikings. Um, but, but we're not really sure at this point. And we're hoping that we can use genetics to track that down. So this, um, in this greenhouse, um, we have a collection of plants, um, the Phragmites, growing. Um, this table is all from North America, here. And uh, this, this table as well is North America. And then the plants over there are a collection from, um, from all over the world. There are plants from Africa, from Asia, uh, from South America, and, and Europe. And also, right here at the front of the table are, are plants um, that are hybrids. These are plants that we uh, did hand crosses and hybridized to get a different mix of genetics so that we could test them. What we're looking for with this research is we're screening for genome size. So we're looking at different populations of the same species of plant collected from all over the world and we're looking at the variation among those populations. And we're looking at variation in sequences, genetic sequences, but we're also looking at variation in genome size. And what that means is the, um, basically the, the genetic content um, in the plant cell. And so um, we're hoping that we're gonna find distinct differences around the world. We have some preliminary data that's positive and we, we are showing differences. But if we find um, that some plants have small genomes and some plants have large genomes, we want to relate that to how invasive a plant is. There's a theory by another Czech. Uh, his name is uh, Marcel Raymanek and he's a very well-known ecologist. He is at um, the University of California um, at, at Davis now. And he had a theory that um, invasive plants um, tend to have smaller genome sizes. They're less DNA, and that would help them to be more invasive. And so we're testing his theory on a global scale right now and, and hoping that, that we can prove it right. It actually has a practical application, which is that if it's true, then we can screen for plants that may become invasive in advance. So say somebody wants to introduce a plant to a country because it's a beautiful flower or a new crop and we're worried about whether that plant will become a problem. Um, we can look at the genome size to see if it's small or large and that's one way we can tell whether this plant can become invasive. So it's a predictive tool. It can be used in risk assessments. This plant 
Phragmites, it's found all over the world. So when I've been visiting different herbaria across Europe, um, all the curators in the herbaria say to me, oh, nobody looks at this plant, it's so common. Why would you want to study this? You know, nobody ever looks at this collection. And for me, it's especially interest, interesting because it is so common. Um, that means that we can find it everywhere and really understand how, how it, it's different globally. People tend to study rare plants, but I'm more interested in the common ones because I think we can learn, learn a lot from them.